that? Oh man, I'm good, man. How how is life been? I guess probably since since the first since the second week of March. How's life been for you? Oh my God, it has been an up and down roller coaster. I'm I'm actually blessed enough to be stuck in the house with my girl, which is like a double edged sword. You know how that goes. <laughs> We've been through one period. Let's say that. <laughs> so working, on, working on the second one. Right? Yeah, it'll be a couple more days before I, I'm close to being kicked out again. You know, that's, <laughs> that's how that goes. Bro, it's, it's some people I know that are, that are in a bad marriage. I'm not even bull driving. And they're yeah. like, man, it, it might be worth it to just catch corona. It might be worth it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Hey. You know, there was a couple minutes in my mind that I was like, hey, man, if I just go on back to my house, I'll be all right. You know? <laughs> you what, what, side, what side of Chicago you on, fine? Okay, so, again, let me introduce this, man, because we okay. just started talking just because we, you know, got it like that. Right. All right, so uh, uh, Trent, that, right now, this is Aaron Foster, uh, C Stand Up. This is my, um, my agency that I use to, you know, sell comedy around. I want to welcome you, Trent Davis, to my uh, my new uh, show on this platform of Zoom, man. I'm interviewing comedians about nice. our, you know, plight during this thing, man. So I want to, yeah. first of all, thank you for uh, joining me on this. Uh, thank, thank you for having me, man. I, I appreciate what you're doing. I see it. I've been a, a fan since probably, you and I met, God almighty, probably eight years ago now, seven years yeah, ago, man. Been I've been a, a fan ever since, man. Yeah, yeah man. I yeah. So. Yep, yep, yep. So, man, and uh, so in, uh, to answer your question, just straightforward, I'm actually okay. sitting right now in Evanston. That's where okay. my girl stays. Okay. And we we uh, got a chance to get in this, uh, you know, what they say, shelter where you are together right here, you know, fight yeah. the whole big, you know, thing together. Yeah. Uh, and, and Evanston is a little bit better of a place to be, man. I live on 125th. Okay. And if you, you heard any of my sets, it's all about dudes shooting all around the crib. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. <laughs> they, and I look at the news today. We supposed to be in your house, not coming out. They still got about four murders in my neighborhood. I'm like, these really? Four, they not going to stop. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they yeah, rather kill and catch corona <laughs> during the murder. You know what I'm saying? Nigga well, coughing just, on his way to the, to the uh, drive-by. Nigga died exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So that you know, that's where I'm at right now, man. And I know I what part of LA? Aren't you still out in LA, right? Yeah, so so I'm LA adjacent, right? I'm uh I'm actually in a spot called Temecula, which is right right between LA and San Diego. Okay. Um I'm out here strategically, right? My my ex and I, we share a seven year old. Yeah. And this is where she's from, right? And so I don't ever want to be more than about fifteen minutes from my daughter because you know LA, man. LA really ain't a great comedy city. It's really not. And you're not getting, it's, it, you know, it's where you, hmm, in the past, and I say five, seven years ago and before, it's where you go to get discovered. I don't even think it's that anymore. I really don't. Uh, uh, uh. I yeah, think it's I, where, where cats go to sign contracts. That's where I look go. at it more. I, I tell people, I tell younger comics, Snoop, all the time that ask me if I'm on the road or something, they say, when do I move to LA? I say, don't. I say, whatever money you was going to spend in LA for rent, so minimum, two grand a month. I said, stay in your city, become a beast in your city, be the best person you could be in your city. I said, and then just go to festivals, right? Just yeah. go to, you know, uh, Laughing Skull and all them, you know, bridge. I don't think they have bridge selling, but go to festivals. Cause I've got everything I've got, not that it's a bunch, but everything I've gotten has come from a festival. Not one thing has come from living in LA, not one. I heard that, and right. I heard LA. It just so it's so cutthroat, man. It's like dudes who you cool with, and y'all might have rode in the car a million times. They come to LA, they'll act like they don't know you in the you know in a in a in a party or something like that. Now, I'm, I'm gonna just say like this. I ain't gonna say no names. Okay. I met a new in LA. Ooh. Okay. And, and, and I think I, I know who you're talking up. about, but because okay. <laughs> I know where this story going. <laughs> well, I, 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 me and you talk about it a lot, and it wasn't anything bad. Let me make sure I say it. it wasn't like he was like, "Fuck you, man, get the fuck out." But it was just like I was like, "What's up, man?" You know, blah blah blah. How we do? Yeah. And uh, and and he was like, "All right." And I was like, "I know exactly who that is." <laughs> I, you know, I left it at that. I said, "All right, man." I mean, you know, I I ain't young in the bond. I'm at, what are we? Twenty three years at this yeah, point. Yeah, so no, I saw I, I saw your uh, happy capiversary anyway. I think it was one or two days away from today. Yeah, well, my mine was March twentieth. I just was doing the capital challenge. 
But mine was March 20th was my anniversary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a sweet video, man. I passed that around. Thank that you, actually bro. was the thing that made me go, you know what? I better go ahead and grab uh, this brother while he's still around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when the, so when... Many, and I don't know if you've seen them, but so many people have been passing around the, the pick up the, the cane challenge. Yeah. And nobody in my nobody in my chapter nominated me. I was like, oh, y'all don't think I'm good enough? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What it is, is we got, now I won't, I'm, I'm going to get off the cap in a minute. But we no, got no, some, man. This is part of that too, because I'm part doing of that, okay. with all noobs. I'm doing Okay. With all noobs, cause um, I sell that uh, I sell that Greek show, and yes. it's been it's been doing pretty well. You know, I wow, get a lot of interest in it. I don't always uh, close the deals because I, you know, I'm dealing with a lot of other things, and I just yeah. went off on, on my own shit. But I get I got offers for it, and that's if I really buy. sell it, and it'll pick back up the way I had it a few years ago. Yeah, that's that's dope, man. We and you and I both know the college market is big man they pay yeah. big money oh yeah so, they, they yeah. got the paper they got the bread they yeah. got the bread they definitely do and oh, then but, black the black colleges also you know black colleges ain't so stuck up like the white colleges uh also you know depending yeah. on where you at you, you go yeah. to stanford or something they might be like oh you cursed you know what i mean but right. You go somewhere like uh, Norfolk State, and you know Bruh. what I'm saying? You're going to be A&T. able to get groovy with it. Yeah. yeah so That's it, man. That's but, it. Uh, but but yeah, man, I, we, we got my chapter, Capitale of Georgia State, we got kicked off in 99. <laughs> I was 97, got kicked off in 99, came back in like 02, and then got kicked off again. I don't know the dates. Like, let's say 05, 06. So yeah. since then, and we've been back since then, but I – since then, I moved to Chicago now. I'm in LA. So none of the none of the cats before, let's say 05, I mean after 05, really know me. Yeah, and yeah. So, and, and, and that's my fault, right? As an old head, I gotta get back and you know, life is life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we're trying to fix that, man, in the bomb. Yeah. We're trying to make it so that you know, I'm talking, I actually sat out with the uh, Grand Polmark when we went to Germany. I got a chance to go to Germany with him, okay. uh, with him and a del another piece of the delegation. You know, they we uh it was it's a long story. We'll talk offline okay. about that. But um man, we're trying to turn it back to a business or uh oriented and service oriented, you know, so where you can uh where cast can start creating money together. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's the bigger thing. Like skull and bones, you know, if you wanna think about it, they, they give a they give like a little pension or stipend circumstance for they uh dudes. And if we build a business up together if, if dudes start connecting the dots we got right. enough brothers in really solid places and intellectually they smart enough to put the put the puzzle together but that's that's a whole bunch of other boring shit we're getting yeah, yeah no that's dope to man into that, you know that's actually cool man and again offline because we know a lot of our brothers are also masons you mentioned skull and bone they yeah. also make so again we'll talk about it offline but that's i think it's smart i think it may I, I like you said i'm i'm connecting the dots yeah, for sure, man. So yeah. with the on the comedy tip, man. Yeah. So you mentioned a couple of things. Now, first of all, I saw I saw you uh you kind of rock it out on blow up on when you got off of the NBC diversity thing. Yeah. I yeah. I was like, so tell us what that's like, man. What what was that like going for? All right, I'm gonna give you the real the real story. And it was uh I'm not gonna ever say good and bad. I don't think it's fair to label it good and bad. I'll I'll label it comfortable and uncomfortable. Okay. Um, so I <laughs> And I and I wrote this down. I put it. In, I'm working on a book, man. I'm writing a book called "How to um, Call Don't Leave Your Day Job, Don't Quit Your Day Job." And just yeah. talks about how to manage having a day job and still chasing a dream, and and you don't have to do that. But anyway, whole another conversation. But long story short, I so I finally made it through to the finals of NBC, NBC Stand Up for Diversity yeah. in 2015. And I okay. say that because what cats don't realize is I had auditioned or applied. In 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and so I say that I bring that up in the book to say just because you get told no yeah. doesn't mean that's the answer. You just got to keep trying. Maybe not. You got to keep trying. But there's nothing. And I'm sure it's the same with you. There's nothing I've gotten that I got it on the first round. I'm like boom, ever, ever. Right? <laughs> even even Kappa, I had to go to him. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, shit. Just, if we start talking capital stories, boy, we'll we'll definitely have a, a two right? hours of I mean, shit. Come on, man. I mean, it was it was hard, right? I'm just saying like that. It was hard. And so uh, and that's a whole nother conversation about Kappa really 
prepared me for Hollywood. Prepared me to not say, not not take no for an answer. And keep yeah, going. yeah. Anyway, whole other conversation with him. <laughs> just cats in the barn. But so I did that. 2015, I auditioned in Dallas. Right. Yeah. Again, I say I'm, I'm I'm connecting all these dots. The reason I tell people it's good to have a day job is because I wasn't getting paid to go to Dallas to audition. And you have to have money to invest in your own thing. So just like you got your own thing, if you don't have money to invest in yourself, not to say you won't make it, but you're going to be at a severe disadvantage than yeah. somebody with money, right? So I had money to go out to Dallas, put myself up in a hotel one night, blah, blah, blah. I did Dallas. When I did Dallas, it just felt different. I knew. I said, all right, this one felt different. I, I killed it. And the funny thing is, the dude from NBC, he had, the judge, he had been a judge, just like four of them. He had been a judge for the previous three years. So he knew me. Yeah. And, he, and I finished my set, and he got up and just gave me a hug. He was like, yeah, this this the one, Trent. This is <laughs> That's good. I was like, bet. So that was in, let's say, September, all, late August, September. They hit me in November and said, all right, you made it to the finals, right? Okay. And that's when... You know, in our head, in my head, I'm thinking, oh, it's it's, it's over. I'm made it to the final. I'm finals. finna buy the Lamborghini. You oh, know get what the saying? guinea on tap, baby. Get the guinea on. I call my mom. You quit that damn job. <laughs> right. I'm glad she Tell, did. Right. I'm glad she did. Tell grandma put a good dress on. Right. We finna exactly. go. <laughs> we getting it. We finna get it, goddamn. Yeah. And um and went to the went to the finals. That was like December six or seven. Went to the finals, and it was a Wednesday night. And it was me and like nine other people. We all in the finals. You remember I, any of them people? Yeah, I do. Um, I, so one cat that's really blowing up right now, Orlando Lavia. Okay. He blowing up. He's he last year I saw him on doing HBO two two late nights. Uh, he's a Latino cat from Miami. Funny dude, super nice dude. Got crazy hair. He's funny. Yeah, yeah. Um. And another one that was, and I'm going to talk about it, and whatever, it is what it is. Let me just put the shit out there. Another one was Dulce Sloan won that year. Dulce Sloan is a black woman from Atlanta. Okay. She's a black woman from Atlanta. Okay. All right. So um, this game, this was, it was just such a good teaching moment about LA and Hollywood and all that shit. So I do the set, blow that shit out the water. I, I, my, I was number six or seven. Which is, you know from comedy is a perfect if you got if you're doing that many it's a perfect one because you don't want to be the first one or two no. or three like really that four five six is that perfect spot and then after yeah. that it gets it gets tiring but right more. right especially depending on how long y'all set size yeah, everybody was doing let's say seven to nine minutes so that can okay. be and the host right and so that yeah. can be whatever so so I go up there. Bah, knock it out the park. It, it, even now, I didn't win. Even now, knowing exactly what happened, I wouldn't change that set. It was that good. And, yeah. I, and they knew it was that good. I blew. Walked out. I walked right to, as soon as I got on stage, walked right to the alley like I was uh, Will Smith in Pursuit of Happiness. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> right, right. I killed his. The, give me the, my bread. Yeah, and I bet the like the wind was different. Right. The energy in the room was different. Oh. The world just seemed like a better place. Oh, I, I felt like I was walking slow motion. I was yeah. everything, man. I bet so two, two things I'm gonna tell you that it, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the first one. I'm gonna tell it to you out of order, but you'll it'll, you'll explain. You'll understand why. Yeah. So later they got the whole group together. Later, like like a couple months later. And a girl that I didn't even know, she was in it. And she was like, Trent, you're so cool. She was like, I'm going to be honest. After the finals, I hated you. And I was like, why? She was like, because I had to follow your set. And it was, it was <laughs> ugly. She was like, I was mad at you. Destroyed personally. her dreams. Huh? <laughs> and I didn't even see her set. Because again, I walked straight out to the guy. Right, right. But this happened when I walked out to, that, uh, to, that, to the alley. This is the other thing that I'll tell you about Hollywood. Go out. Call my man. No, my manager calls me now. My manager's in New York, so it's, let's say ten o'clock LA time. It's one in the morning. Yeah. Right? He called me. He like Trenton. Uh, I just want to say I already heard you blew. I already heard from the people there. You killed it. He said, but I want to let you know something. NBC wants a woman to win this year. Oh yeah, I hate that. <sighs> yeah. But it was a good lesson to learn. <clears throat> it was a great lesson to learn as a yep. man as a black man in America and whatever, all the, <laughs> add all the, the categories. Right. 
talent is not enough. Nah, nah, dude. My favorite story behind that is he was like, oh, man, talent, if you funny, you funny. I was like, man, if it was about funny, Marcus Combs would be a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? I was like, that dude would be rich. He's still trying to, you know, hustle and, and, and make it. And, and there's so many stories like that. You know what yes. I mean? Like, there's a cat that, you know, Chicago, B. Cole. B. Cole wrote some of the coldest shit Dion Cole had when he was mm. uh, on Conan. Yeah. And, and, man, he's still, you know, just putting it together, you know. Are they related at all? No, nah, they just, you know, it's Chicago brothers, yeah, man. We just all came up together. They was way ahead of, ahead of me. I was, a, yeah. you know, my story is I was a DJ at first. So they they do their thing. But you know how you call your boy and you like, hey, man, I got this. Well, it was like when Dion first started working for Conan, you know, that's a, that's a hard transition, right, yeah. from – doing what we do to being a writer for the biggest, one of the biggest shows on TV. Yes. And Dion gave, I mean, B. Cole gave that dude a nugget and it was like uh, something about them skinny jeans and shit. Uh, and, okay. and the shit just blew up on TV. Oh. And, uh, you know, and Dion just started to become the man because, you know, Dion could write on his own. Yeah, yeah. Dion Cole with it. and uh, But, you know, it was one of them things that got you over the hurdle. Yes, yes. And so that you know, fits what we're talking about. Are, are they still cool? Are they still oh, working? Together? Yeah, yeah. They actually, you need to uh, when you, you need to plug with them. They got a little room. Well, when you know when the COVID go, they got a little room in LA. It's called the Dojo. Okay. And so Dion and uh, and B kind of interact there. You know. Okay. I mean? That's yeah. The, I don't know if they building it together, so to say, because it's mostly B Cole's room. But okay. I saw them talking about. You know, I saw some flyers with them too uh, doing something. Okay. And you know Dion Big, nah, man. You know, oh, I know, man. man. His, his his special on Netflix, I think, was one of the best specials. Because it came out late last year, right? Yeah. I yeah. think it was one of the best specials of 2019. I, I, think, I, it's I of, think it's I think it's top 20 in they whole, you know, in the whole creation of, of a, a Netflix. Coming from Chicago, we don't really hold no bones. I don't care if they never pick me. Yeah. I uh I just know that about 80% of the shit they got on there is all political and it's bullshit. Yeah, Quite I mean, simple. Cats can yeah, be mad at me for saying it's, it. It's you, you're absolutely right, man. I, and now they're doing. Now they offering, uh, which is, I'm not saying it's bad. They're, they're just going with where where the society and generation is going. But because people have low um, attention span, now they offering 15 minute specials. 15 minute, <laughs> nigga. That's that's a that's a bit. <laughs> that's yeah, that's a get. guest spot. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> The flip side is if you can, not you, but if anybody can take that 15 minutes, parlay it into now we got 5 million, 10 million of their own real fans. We're like, what yeah. reason I like? Right. Now, goodness, hey, I'll take that you little 15 eat. minutes. Yeah. Exactly. That's the goal, man. That's how we, uh, anybody with some sense that got into this knows it has nothing to do with being chosen all the time to be on the show. It's really about controlling your art and being able to put the butts in the seats and get that $25 or whatever out of their hands. Just like what happened to that dude. Uh, man, what's that dude who they had, they had uh, cut, kind of try, tried to cancel him. He was on the top too. Um, Said he was jagging off in the in the oh, house. Oh, Louis C.K. I just, yeah, did, Louis C. I, I just did a thing about it. Yeah, Louis C.K. Yeah, that's right. You did post something yeah. about him, man. I'm like, in the beginning, I was like, man, he, he didn't rape nobody. You know, like Chappelle said, he said they could have left or they could have hung up. But but they went after him brutally. He, what his problem was is he yielded. He 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 had already set up his website to sell his shows. All he had to do was keep selling his shows, keep doing shows, and who would have showed up would have been the people that would have enjoyed his comedy or but, what he but, was doing. But believe it or he not, lost his, he lost his arrangements with TV, but TV ain't controlling the market no more. YouTube I, is closer to controlling the market, but the internet is actually controlling the market. And Louis C.K. made like two million off his own CD on his own website. He should have just kept going with that, man. If I knew the dude like that, I would have told him that, man. Fuck these people, man. Keep doing what you're doing because the people that, that like comedy going to come. We too attached to listening to what these little millennials want to do and what they're talking about, but they not they not the ones coming to my show. They not yeah. the ones coming to most of the shows. They they go to uh, see the them, them little black twins, you know what I'm saying? Them little bearded <laughs> motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? They, they ain't going to see... 
You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what they go through. The dudes over, uh, I know who you're talking about. The you know what I'm talking about? They, uh, I forget their name, but they, you know, some little funny looking black dudes with beards. They yeah, skinned yeah. up shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they wouldn't have lasted in Chicago, man. <laughs> We'd have been oh, like, go, take one and two and get your ass out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know Bring the, you know. <laughs> but believe it or not, what everything. They famous is, now, though. Yeah, they are. Everything that you said. Believe it or not, Louis C.K. did it. He just did it on the low. He kept making his money. He kept having shows. And now he can look. And what he did, he said, look, y'all, do y'all think I'm going to go to Paris for two years? And, yeah. be, and now he came back and right back. Bye. Yeah, yeah. So believe it or not, he was Because somebody, when I made that post, somebody told me, they said, believe it or not, I, I got to see him in Richmond, California. That's what the poster said. And they said, yeah. and his ticket was 20 bucks. They said he was still... A, a genius and the idea that they got the ticket for 20 bucks just showed you what happened. Yeah. So he was still doing it on the low, which I okay, think makes good, sense. man. Yeah, yeah. And that's he, how we, that's how all of us gonna have to survive these, you know, these little um, you know, I think the problem is is they had too many of them uh play dates. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what it was. It's like come play with me, come over, and then we'll act like we like each other and we'll do the same thing all together. It wasn't nothing created uh organically. So now they say, hey, if I don't like you, I'm telling my friends don't like you, and then they walk away, right? Yeah. yeah. But man, it's more than them in the world. So, you know, hey. And and, and this is one hell. thing, man. Kevin Hart, Dane Cook, them cats really started the whole, I'm, I'm going to get your email, and I'm going I'm to own my own audience. I'm not going to go yeah. to NBC to get my audience. Right. I'm going to own my own audience. And they got all the power. And yeah. nobody would argue. And I, I, I'm a fan of Kevin because of his business acumen. Yeah. Right? I'm a, yeah. I am don't care what nobody's if you say he's funny or not funny. I ain't even in all that. He, that don't matter. That don't matter. don't matter. It's really about them butts in the seats. He you know what what and he funny enough. They got their money. Enough. They got and He got their money. He gave them enough uh, comedy so they go home and be like, oh, I had a good time. And tomorrow they're going to go find something else to do. And that's that's it. all it's about. And, and it's one more thing. Who other than Tyler Perry is employing as many black people as Kevin Hart? Yeah, I, I know, man. I know. I know. I, as they say, I'll wait. Go ahead. You tell yeah, me. Right? Exactly. So, so I don't care what nobody say. If, if I'm employing maybe not hundreds, but at least a hundred, maybe probably over a hundred, over a hundred African American people. Yeah. Now you know when I give an African American person a job, it's not just in, in, impacting him, it's impacting their entire family. Right. If I'm doing that, if I'm I left my legacy. I'm getting people scholarships and money, and I'm taking them from one place, point A to point B. I'd I be happy. I'm 100%. I'm happy. I think the bigger part of that is is the inspiration that he's um, creating. So yeah. uh, that's what our biggest fall, downfall has been over the years is we haven't been able to continue to create business creators. Yeah. So you'll have somebody like Bob Johnson, our fraternity brother, and he... I don't know of anybody that said Bob Johnson took me under his wing and taught me how to create another what he was doing. And yeah. so what I heard uh, Kevin Hart is doing is helping dudes build their own things on the side. Yeah. And they might he might put them under his umbrella and make some money off of it. But that's 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 part of the game, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm with you. His, uh, his trainer, right? His trainer has now his own line of training videos. Yeah. Right. Awesome. So I'm with you. Hundred percent. I'm with you. Hundred percent. That's awesome. Yeah. So so check this out, man. Um, my primary uh, reason for doing this is I seen you prior to the COVID doing very well, man, and I love what you're doing, my fraternity brother. I look forward to us doing some stuff in the near uh, future once this Thank thing you, goes or goes away. But so, do you have a, a post COVID plan, man? What What are you gonna do um, yeah. to make sure that you create uh, income for yourself as well as keep your your uh, business going as a comedian? Yeah, I, I, that's a great question. I, I, let me answer in two ways. One, I, I do have a post-COVID plan, but I also have a present COVID plan. Yeah. And the present COVID plan is why we out write as, write as much as I can. So I'm trying to write a new hour. Now, you know, because you in the game, just because you write an hour don't mean you got an hour. Because out of that hour, maybe, maybe I can use, because I ain't trying to know nobody, right? Right. So maybe I can use, let's say if I've been, I've been in the game 15 years, maybe I can use 50% of it. Okay. 50% of it, I'm like, all right, this is, and that's being high. 
This yeah. is good. But the other 50% of my like, throw away, and now I go write another and go write. So I tell people, I say, really, to get an hour, you probably need to write three. And then you can get your hour out of that three. Yeah, right? if you can remember that shit. If you can remember. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, that's exactly right. So I tell people, just in the, in the screenwriting game, an hour is about a page a minute. So in other words, you're writing 180 pages to yeah. get to 60 pages worth of good shit, right? Right, right. So doing that, other thing, and this is me and you got to talk offline, I'm trying to create my own content as far as TV shows or whatever, but I want to do it online. So right now, like rather than do a 30 minute episode, I would do, I'd rather have 12 five minute episodes. Got you. Right, 12, right. and then just build that, <clears throat> and then and then go for, and, and I want it to be us. Like I'm gonna tell you the first one that I'm writing where, right now is imagine if the number one college uh, recruit, basketball college recruit in America, decided to go to a black college. Rather than go to Duke, oh, Chapel yeah. Hill, go to a and That's why I went to school a and go to North yeah. Carolina A&T, yeah. So, right. you know, boom, I want to try that, right? And then I got I got three or four more others like that. Well, I want to, but this is the thing, it costs money. Even if I'm shooting 12 five-minute episodes, the money ain't in the shooting, the money is in the editing. Yeah, so no doubt. That's <clears throat> I'm trying to write these and get it so I have a, a series Bible, get it all put together. And then I'm starting to, uh, I'm starting to submit, submit to Netflix, submit to festivals, but it'll be less than a comedy festival, uh, a not a sketch festival, but a festival that's looking at content like that. Yeah. Right. And and me being a comedian is just a bonus, right? right. They see me like, oh, he know what he he knows what he's doing. So anyway, I'm trying to create my own content. So when I come out of this, what I what I've written on my goals, if I were to take you to my bathroom, is release. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, but release 12 episodes of the name of that project and yeah. then release 12 episodes of another project. So I want to have all those 24 episodes released by the end of the year. So that's my post-COVID plan. That's so awesome, that if, if it never gets back, I can still try to generate income by building content. Okay. Yeah. Well, we do have an outlet for that, man. I got okay. a, uh, one of our fraternity brothers, a uh, cat who's a lawyer. His wife actually is one of the decision makers at Netflix. They live out in, um, they live out there where Jordan live in the south, in the north suburbs. Okay, yeah. Is, uh, is, is, I mean, he asking me to find cats who got uh, screenplays and who got uh, uh, content that's, you know, already ready to go. And he funding it, you know, or finding wow. funding it to it. So, that's what's up, man. Uh, we're gonna, okay. we gonna try to, cause that's the wave of the future, bro. Ain't nobody, yes. ain't nobody really got to go to Hollywood no more, cause, you know, those yeah. big, big places. Plus, man, who wants to? You know, I don't know what the, um, what the, the, the couch is gonna be like no more. Right. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> that cast the couch. Who, golly, <laughs> that's a. That made me stay away from Hollywood. They like, right, right, right. And look, hey, look, they was they was getting women and men. You right, you. that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm like, nah, I don't want no parts of that. <laughs> Shit. That's Weinstein, a monster. He, right. you know. <laughs> hey, I want to before, before we get out of here, I want to connect you with a guy. His name is Cedric Rogers. Yeah, he's he's a new from Alpha New. That's North Carolina A&T. He's a new from Alpha New. Okay, ninety seven. So he's my saying. Anyway, he just bought. And I say just bought like three three months ago, all deaf digital. Yeah, I saw I saw a post about that, man. That's, I saw a post him. about that. So I mean, he would be a good interview. I mean, not a comedian, but he's I mean, it's the president of all deaf that's curating comedy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so even on even maybe on this platform or just yeah. y'all connecting in general. Yeah. You know, put me in a put me in an email with a man and, and okay. I'm gonna make sure that I get a get a chance to talk to him and, and exchange some ideas or whatever, but at least interview him on this little platform I'm creating. So with this video, man, and then we're going to wrap it up. I, uh, okay. I'm building my C stand up YouTube channel. Okay. The, the website has been going for about, uh, let's see, it's nine. It's been going since about Oh five. Cause okay. I've been booking shows through it. it. Used to be called the Aaron Foster experience. And I would travel around the, you know, the country with dudes in the car and we would, you know, do shows wherever, farms, right. all types of shit. We got a lot. But uh, <laughs> this is going to be on that channel, man. And it's going to be right. edited a little bit and, and spruced up. But man, I really appreciate you, uh, you know, taking your day, your, your uh, busy schedule, coming out and kicking it with me like this, man. And, Thank and you I for having me, bro. Can't wait to sit sit together. I think what we should start doing, man, is trying to put something together for like province 
and for uh you know uh, uh you know province yeah. and, and oh I'm with you the, yeah I'm with you. chapter meetings and but we just got to get out there and get it done man that's yep, what's up. No. I had a chance to do it in Vegas but I had so much personal mayhem going up and down that I that I just dropped the ball on it man yeah. and Cass was yeah. like Vegas the they were they were cool with it they were like you know give me the proposal it really wasn't really about a proposal. It was really about putting together the hotel room, getting out there and getting the show together, you know, yeah. the room and getting the show together. But um, we're going we gonna to have to put the news together, man, and get yeah. that shit happen. Let's do it, man. I appreciate it. Um, make sure you use, uh, make sure you, I know it's your site, but make sure they you plug them where they can find you online, digital. I'm at Trenton Comedy on everything. Make sure they yeah. plug you. So my, 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 when I send it out, I want my people to be able to find you as well. Okay, man. Let's uh, let's appreciate you, bro, and, and okay. uh, signing off. Thank you. All right, fine. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yep, yo. Yep. I'm not afraid to get married. I don't want you to think I'm afraid to get married. My folks have been married 48 years. I'm not afraid of marriage. I'm afraid of spending 30 grand on a wedding. <laughs> it just scares the hell out of me. 30 grand on a wedding? That is a bad bet, okay? 50% of first marriages end in divorce. 60% of second marriages end in divorce. 72% of third marriages end in divorce. Marriage is the only thing you do where the more you do it, the worse you get at it. <laughs> 30 grand on a wedding is like going to Vegas and playing blackjack and the dealer gives you a three and a four. You're like, I'm all in. I don't think you know how to play blackjack. <laughs> That's the blackjack rule book. <laughs> 30 grand on a wedding scares the hell out of me. You know what I'm okay with? Spending 30 grand on a 30 year anniversary celebration. That I'm okay with, because you spent 30 years, you've earned it. Right now, we get together and celebrate. That shit I'm okay with. 30 years, you stuck with her for the long haul, you found out she's a hoarder and keeps mayonnaise in the sock drawer. But you love her, you're like, I'm okay with the fig newtons by my underwear, I'm cool with that, baby, you know? 30 years, you found out he's a closet alcoholic and sits in the garage all weekend, drinking whiskey, singing the theme song, the 80s TV shows. Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Shut the door, Janet. I just think America makes marriage too easy. You ought to have to get a degree in relationships before you get married. Yes, yes. If you're gonna be with somebody for the rest of your life, you ought to be qualified, right? Men, we should have to take classes. All the men in here, like a quality time class. Just sit in a room all day and hate it. Just And ladies, you guys are so naturally great at relationships, you guys wouldn't have to take but one class. Woo! <laughs> It'd be called silence. <laughs> Professor would come in and turn on ESPN and open a beer. See how long you can shut the hell up. Just Talking through class. That was perfect. I owe you. I love you. I think we should have divorce insurance. Wouldn't it be cool if we had divorce insurance in your. Yes! Fuck oh, yeah, there's people that's gone through a divorce. That way you don't have to worry about losing all your money. Just so let me get insurance. I will pay for that shit. I will pay for divorce insurance. And your deductible is based on the chances of you getting a divorce. You know what I'm saying? That means somebody would have to appraise each and every one of us in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, sir, I don't know you. You seem like a good dude. But let's say you have a hard time keeping a job or you like midget porn. <laughs> right? Like, you have, probably have a high deductible. You know what I'm saying? Right, ladies, you don't like to cook or give head? <laughs> Whoa! Your deductible would be through the roof. <laughs> Geico would not insure that shit at all. That little lizard would be like, she doesn't do what? <laughs> Call us when you get a DUI. At least we know you're drinking. <laughs> <laughs>